Because of Classroom Close-Up, I have had windows into other educators' classrooms. I see what an amazing state we are, where there are so many talented and creative educators giving their 100% to their children every single day. As an educator, it's always nice to have your work highlighted, but especially as an arts educator, we spend so much time fighting for our funding. But when you have a segment like Classroom Close-Up showing the value and showing the impact to the community and the students in arts programming, you can't put a price on that. Well, I tell you what, Classroom Close-Up is extraordinary, and the young lady we have on camera has been helping to make it happen for more than a few years. Wanda Swanson, executive producer of Classroom Close-Up, produced by the New Jersey Education Association and been airing on public broadcasting for many years before that on a different platform. And we've been partners and collaborators. We've been running excerpts from Classroom Close-Up, featuring those educators who are so special. Uh, I heard that this is apparently time that you're stepping away from this? I'm retiring. You're too good at this. What are you doing? <laughs> uh, you know, every, it's time for everybody to move on and, and enjoy life and travel and drink coffee on the porch. But um, I've had a great run. It's been 25 wonderful years. You know, you're from Wyoming originally. Mm -hmm. You're not a Jersey girl, but you've adopted our state. We've adopted you. Love this state. And with your colleagues at Classroom Close-Up, you just had such an impact for, for, for 25 years, 15 Emmy Awards, and potentially more because there'll be more submissions um, in the near future. Your greatest satisfaction in doing this? Giving voice to people that are voiceless. I mean, people are so critical of the schools, but they don't know what it's like to, to go in and see not only the, the teachers and the impact that they have on the students, but everybody that works in the schools, they care. I mean, from the, the secretary to the aide and the bus driver and the food service worker, those are their babies and they care about those kids. And we're giving them a voice. Um, they're the heroes. How many classroom close-up close segments do you think you and your team have done in the past 25 years? About 15 to 1,700. Wow. That's a lot. And, and we've had this conversation before. How have you picked among thousands, tens of thousands of great educators? We try to do a variety of locations from north to south, from preschool to community college, from and the topics, the, the variety of topics. But um, And then we also always highlight Teachers of the Year, County That's Teachers right. of the Year. Um, there's, there's tons of sources, but I usually, when I first started, I was told, you may have a problem finding stories. <laughs> Never. I mean, there's always a stack of story ideas. Any one, this is ridiculous. You're not going to do it? No, no, because they're all amazing. I mean, I can walk into any school and find an amazing story. There's always, I, I, it wouldn't be fair to anybody to say there was one. Well, favorite. how about this one? Help me on this, Georgette. Is it uh, Dr.? Dr. Sai. Dr. Sai? Mm -hmm. Siddiqui. Dr. Siddiqui. Why don't we do this? Dr. Siddiqui was featured on Classroom Close-Up, one of the oh, almost 2,000. Uh, let's just take a look. Throughout his career, Mr. Sai has touched many of his students' lives by using a hands-on learning approach and also challenging them to always do their best. But he never realized how much he meant to some of these kids until he received a phone call from a former student. He called me. It changed the way I looked at every student from that phone call on. It was a, a life-changing phone call. And I said, why would you call me? He said, do you remember that day after school? I took the brain and spinal cord out of the frog. You told me it was the best one you'd ever seen. He said to me, you know, you got the hands for surgeon. You're a smart, bright boy, and you could be a surgeon. You could be a brain surgeon if you wanted to. I remember that. I remember that clearly. You could be a brain surgeon. And that is a very important thing especially when you're 13 years old. Because if you didn't think that, or if you had no idea you even wanted to be a brain surgeon, now that pops into your head. And you could say to yourself, you know what? It's my teacher who I respect told me that I have what it takes to be a brain surgeon. What does that mean to you? Uh, 
Well, and the story went further from there. It went to StoryCorps, and they went to D.C. Um, they were at the White House talking about the story and the fact that we gave them the opportunity to tell their story, and it's gone viral since then. He contacted me about a month ago and, and said what an impact that that story had on him and on a lot of people because people need to see that story, that teachers change lives. They, they, it sounds so trite to say that they uh, mold the future, but they do. They are, they're making the future doctors and lawyers and people that are changing the world. So Kids 13 years of old, 13 years of age. Dr. Sai, Dr. Dr. Siddiqui, tells him he sees something in him. Mm -hmm. And now he's a brain doctor, saving lives. Can you truly appreciate the impact that you and your colleagues have had? Um... Because not every person who has been impacted by classroom close-up is saying, let me connect with Wanda and her team and tell her what it's meant. Do you have any idea? I do, and we hear it all the time. Uh, we're coming upon our 25th and final season, and we're doing uh, interviews with people about the impact that the show had on them. And, and we're telling uh, they're, they're heroes, and they're, it's the... Usually there's only a tension when there's a shooting or there's something bad at the school. So to have someone go in and tell their stories and, and show the impact that they have, not us, but that they're having mm -hmm. in this world, they're the heroes. And my producers, you said the producers. They are the best. They are amazing. And by the way, we're going to try to find a way, because we've had a long time collaboration with the New Jersey Education Association, we're going to try to find a way to continue to use whatever video clips there are to profile educators. Um, because I can't even describe, I can't describe the impact public school educators have had an hour for children. Um, extraordinary. You know, you said you wanted to just hang out on the porch and drink coffee. Mm -hmm. Come on, seriously. Oh, no. I'm going to get involved in passionate causes and because and, I, I can't just sit still. So I'm excited about that. There's life after broadcasting? There is. There is. We'll talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can't thank you enough for being a great partner, a great colleague, an extraordinary journalist and producer um, who has brought credit and honor to all of us who call ourselves broadcasters. Thank you, Wanda. And thanks for your support, really, seriously. It's our honor and pleasure. We'll be right back right after this. The preceding program has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence. Funding for this edition of Caucus New Jersey has been provided by Horizon Blue Cross Blue Shield of New Jersey, the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation, RWJ Barnabas Health, St. Peter's University, United Airlines, New Jersey State Nurses Association, and the Institute for Nursing, and by New Jersey Resources. Transportation provided by Airbrook Limousine, serving the metropolitan New York, New Jersey area. Caucus New Jersey has been produced in partnership with TriStar Studios.